It's Austin, Austin Texas. Texas. This is Stacker News Live. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Stacker News Live. My name is Carl with BFF Keon. How's your your day? My day is it's a good day. The sun rose and it will fall. Dang. Later it's on. Like every every uh it's almost like every week we start the same way and you tr- you drop like a solilo- soliloquy. Is that the right? Well, what else do I have? To, I don't know. It's like a normal day. To me, it's not. Is it? Is it more like a what's a soliloquy? So, am, am I saying the word right? I'm not a. I feel like you major. drop like a almost like a rhyme. It's not a rhyme though. It's, it's kind of like what a it rhyme. is is nonsense. It's like no, I say nothing. I say things that everyone knows happen. That's what I do. Because that's the. I just don't know what else to say. It's like I arrived Talk about at your work. week. So I arrived I know, at, but what'd you do though? I came to work. I worked, and then I went home. Uh, Does every day feel the same for you? I hope so. Uh, I mean, usually that's my goal. Interesting. Start to feel pretty good, and that's what I do. How was your week? It was busy. Super busy week. Um, we're we're doing the chippy party tonight. Oliver over there is uh, launching. Into the uh, app stores. Is it both app stores or just the first app store? Worldwide. Worldwide release. Worldwide. He's also going to be streaming it from the Jippy. Uh, Jippy headquarters. Jippy headquarters. Jippy profile, whatever. Let me see. Uh, let me see if I can. Yeah, Jippy right there. Jippy.app. Check it out. Skiackers. Look at how. Launching tonight. Great Look it looks. It looks really clean. It does. What do you What do you think about uh, all this stuff? I'll have more to say once I use that. Ooh. But I'm looking forward to down. If he uh, If he launches If he launches real world territories, I'm going to take over seven eight seven zero four. I'm calling it now. All right, we'll see. What is even seven eight seven zero four? It's a zip that, code. So oh, okay. You have to take over the O two. Okay. That's what I'm saying. All right. Is it good? Do they correspond to zip codes? The yeah. Little, I don't know. Do they correspond to zip codes? <laughs> Uh, oh wow! So maybe you don't. I want to get geotracked. So maybe I'll just coordinate around where I live. Who knows? Okay. Well, maybe. Well, well there shouldn't be overlap. Shouldn't be overlap. So we'll we could see. Both be kings, lords. <laughs> Jippy lords. We'll be underground kings on Jippy app. Uh, cool. Um, if you've never seen this crazy show before, we talk about soliloquies. Soliloquies. Neither of us know what they are, but we talk about Soliloquies. It's a, it's a thing. Soliloquy. I feel like I'm spelling it wrong now. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, right there. Look, I'm spelling it right. It's like what a woman's body part does. The long, narrow sea pot of many plants of the cabbage. No, I'm thinking the wrong thing. A narrow, elongated two valve. Nope, I'm thinking, okay. Sounds wrong more definition. like the thing I was describing. Yeah. Anyways. Um, uh, yeah, if you've never seen this crazy show before, we cover the top five stories on Stacker News, lot on Stacker News, front page of Bitcoin. Um, check it out. It's a what is it? Is is uh more website. stackers? Is more stackers coming on board recently? I feel like it's people are off, off of vacation now. Uh, I think registrations are up a lot, so that's good. That I looked at that today, and I was like, oh, there's more of those than there were than there have been. What do you I think, think that's attributed to? I think the AMAs help a lot. Uh, so that makes sense. I'm, it could be something else, but it's probably mostly the AMS, I would guess. Pod, podcast, uh, podcast is up. Downloads are up. That's great. People, more people hear in my voice. I think uh, no one want to sound. Like I ran into somebody this week, and they knew me from Stacker News Live, which is kind of sad. Everybody's like, "Oh, you're where the guy they, from Stacker News Live." Where else are they going to know you from? Pub Lab. But what 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 properties does Pub Lab have where they discover you? Because you, that's true. When you do when you do podcasts, you do them under a different brand. This is what I'm telling you about having more than taking one brand. Taking out Pleb Lab Live. <laughs> Should be one brand. <laughs> you can do one brand at a time. It's We're doing Pleb Lab Live time. next you're not, week. You're not Elon no more Musk. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, but yeah, they know me from Stacker News Live. And they love the show. What's not to love? We've got a, a clutter. I spent a whole I spent a whole us. two hours on it every week. It's great. I spend a whole two hours on it as well. <laughs> we're even. Uh, we're going to jump into the top five stories of the week. There's some good ones here this week, right? I believe so. I got some spicy stuff to share. 
we'll see. I'll, we'll probably disagree, but I think it'll be good. Good banter. Uh, the first top story is some updates about Darth Coin Citadel. This is from um, Darth Coin. Darth Coin. Meta territory. 81 comments, 15,200 cents. Why is it a meta? I think, you know, Darth Coin is like an old school stacker. Oh, so he's just claiming it as like meta commentary. Well, like uh, oh, before, can- before we had territories. People would post this kind of gen- this like no category content yeah. and meta, and so he's continuing to do that. I think is what's up. I feel like this should go mostly harmless. Mostly harmless would be a good one, but I really like that territory. Anyway, this is about Darth Coin. It gives us a recap of his Citadel building uh, f- uh, following this summer, and it's pretty cool. I think he shared more details about it than he did the last time, specifically like the process of building it. And what I'm like, perhaps the most surprising thing is that he does all of it with, with by hand. He's not using any machines to build uh, this home that he's building in the middle of nowhere, which would probably be hard to get machines there for one, but he could probably get some machinery there, but he's doing it all by hand anyway. So he's like all of these rocks you see in this picture that we're showing all move by hand. These earth bags are filled with dirt that he dug out himself and then sifted out the bigger rocks and just so it's like finer dirt in the bags and he's showing us lining he's showing us that he's lining this house with these earth bags and he describes that he's the goal is to build a very small structure first that he can live in while he builds a second bigger structure and he's about it looks like he's about halfway done with uh, the first structure if not more in that first picture we showed it also showed his fireplace that he built into it Anyway, it looks it looks really cool. I mean, you could imagine having a really nice, peaceful life um, somewhere like this. He doesn't. He's going to have hydropower. Maybe he'll have like Starlink internet or something else eventually. But you know, really impressive what he's done just by hand. Like those are all all those rocks were pulled out of dirt by hand. That big giant pile of rocks is is uh, is all by hand and it has to feel really good uh, to be so. I don't know. So responsible for something that you're benefiting from so directly. And I think that was the, I think it might be the opening to the fireplace there, possibly. Oh, really interesting. Sure. Oh, no, I think that's another Oh, then one. that's how he sifts through the rocks, too. That's so cool. Um, I don't know, man. When I look at this, I'm just like, dude, talk about like a, a massive undertaking. Uh, I just could never possibly think about doing something like this, you know? Um, Why not? I just, I'm not built to do stuff like this. Like my, my dad used to force us to go work, like Mm -hmm. with cutting lawns and doing like all manual work. And my mom, I used to whine so much about it. That's why my mom threw me in all those arts stuff on the weekend. No, because I'd be whining about, I didn't want to go. I mean, there would be some times I would have to go, but it was doing stuff like this, dude. Like, I mean, when I did, I did learn the value of hard work. Like, but it's. You didn't enjoy it. No, my younger brother did. My two older brothers did. Yeah, but yeah, I never different strokes. So you yeah. just you'd pay someone to do it. Do you want to do uh, something like this? That's no, I would want to join and help, or maybe learn. You know, like if, if like if I knew Darth, like if Darth was a friend here in Austin and he was building this, I'd want to come over and like help him sometimes to help build this while we drink beers or something. That's how I would like want to do I see. it. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're like the friend that shows up like while well, there's like a half an hour left in the day. <laughs> <laughs> <Pretty much. laughs> you like you like you throw a little bit of dirt you pick up a shovel throw like, yeah we knocked oh, it out man, man. <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah you bring the pack of beer I, 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 the only thing i see this is where i wish i had the vision but i would love to see what it looks like like how he envisions it and maybe dorothy can sketch it out uh, but like i would like to see what it looks oh, like that'd be a great idea i think what we're looking at here is this will be the front of the house Oh, okay. Yeah, and that's the back back of the house, that back wall. So right. this is the front of the house. Yeah, the entrance. This will be. Yeah, we're, we'll be. This is like us walking to through the entrance, and it's gotcha. supposed to be a very small little space. Because all that's going to be used right there. That's part of the house too, right? That pile. I don't know exactly. I think that's where he's digging it out. But he's really he's showing a lot of care for making sure it's like insulated. Uh, so I just recently saw the Hobbit again. Um, I think if he builds it out, like, cause I remember like two years ago when he started doing this, he mentioned the Hobbit mm-hmm. or maybe you mentioned it. And, um, it's funny when he just posted this, I was like, Oh dude, 
it crossed my mind when I was watching The Hobbit. I was like, oh yeah, this is what Darth was picturing. If you watch The Hobbit, it's like a, it's like a, a hill. It's basically a hill that you build a house inside of, basically. Mm-hmm. And so I wonder if that's kind of, and I think that's what he said before, but. I think that's part of it. But if you, in the past, pic, in the, in the past picture, you see that it's not actually directly inside of a hill. It's just kind of adjacent to one. And he dug, he dug deep in the hill. And so it's like kind of sort of in a hill, but not completely yeah. under one. But it has a lot of great thermal properties when you build into earth like that. It'll stay cooler in the summer. And warmer. hotter and warmer in the winter, yeah. it'll retain more heat. And so that's yeah. kind of the benefit of, of doing a shelter cool. this way. Good job. We got the top comment from, uh, let me see here. Top comment was from Siggy. Siggy said, I'm wondering about the roof. How are you going to support it? And then Dar says, with something like this. And these are like some four by fours or what is that? Five by fours? What are they called? I would guess those are more vertical. Like, like, what is that? Like a four by eight. Mm. Uh, but yeah, it's looking. Just going to put a structure up. It sounded like what he was going to do is he was going to make it uh, lean a little bit on one side so that the water can run off of it. And on top of the roof, he was going to do like a garden on top of the roof, grass, mosquito, like flowers that mosquitoes don't like the scent of is his plan. There. Then he also showed this. I guess this is just kind of scrap wood. I think that's what he's building uh, the roof out of is old pallet, wood, yeah. recycled wood. And then the next comment was from uh, Scoresby says, I'm glad you dig by hand, Darth. I dig by hand. Lots of people say, Kubota, this, or excavator, that. I say wrecking bar and a shovel. Okay, I'll admit I use wheelbarrow too, but only sometimes keep up the good work. And then Nichiro said, I knew you were a savage, but I didn't know you were such a savage. Dace Beast. Yeah, true. I love this one. It will come. In due course. What if he is Janet Yellen? Or uh, not Janet. That's not Janet Yellen. What if he is, uh, just what's this lady's name? Again? Legrand? Is yeah, that her Victoria. Name? No, not Victoria. It's, uh, I forget her name. Some, something, something some, some, that we don't know. Anyway, it's a, a soliloquy. That's <laughs> what it is. Anyways, great post. Anything else you got on this? No, I think it's great. I think it's awesome. Oh, yeah. See the first two parts here, Stuckers. Yeah, he wrote he wrote them up uh, on his Substack. He also has them on Stacker News. I think he put them on yeah. Stacker News. This is what it ago. used to look like. Oh yeah, it is the Hobbit house. See, yep. Don't paint it red though, Darth. Why not? What's a good color? bad luck? Oh, is it red door? Is a red door bad luck? No. Okay, so what's a good luck door color? Anything but red. Oh, this is interesting. Look how he's dead. Wow, it's almost like a monk. You can, I mean, it's really impressive how little you need Look at to, that. to live well. And where it is now? See? That's why I always say, just get it started. It doesn't matter where you start from. Just get started. And it can look like that. And wow. then before you know it, it looks like this. Without a red door. Yeah. Bad luck. You'll, Sauron will come back. Darth, if you, you need, if you need help uh, a weekend, let me know. I'll come by with some beers and... You have to hike, I think, and deep into the we'll mountains. Just, of wherever we'll just do Stacker lives. News live from there, and Keon will be wherever you're at. Yeah, you'll be all grainy and breaking up. <laughs> uh, the next top story is the current state of building in Bitcoin. This is from Tristan, August 27th. 28 comments, 10,600 sets. Keon, Bitcoin territory. What is this? Uh, this is Tristan Rentan, uh, venting about uh, building on Bitcoin. Uh, he's the... Tristan is a co-founder of BitEscrow, uh, which is trying to do escrow on Bitcoin. And he's just talking about the, you know, how hard it's been not only to like tech, build the technical stuff or, and, and navigate a co-founder relationship, but, you know, raising the funds to continue to do it, the emotional roller coaster of building something and having these losses. So you're like working very hard and then having losses it tends to it tends to confuse people psycho, like psychologically and emotionally yeah. quite a bit and really just you know mess you up uh and that you know so he's describing that here he ties it into the mutiny wallet stuff ties it into you know more ecosystem things to talk about how it's easier to do altcoins and which is a common narrative we hear um yeah but 
I think, you know, good, uh, right place to do it. A lot of people are in similar spots now. I know a lot of founders who are trying to raise and having trouble. So, yeah. Top comment was from Golu. He says, keep building, please. I'm in the logistics business. I'm very new to Bitcoin. What I can understand so far is that Bitcoin is the perfect logistics of money. If, if it's perfect, nothing is going to stop it. Coins reporter said, finally making good strides, bro. Team up pleb says, I like the phrase, the perfect logistics of money. Coins reporter said, over the years, I witnessed that Indian Bitcoin devs have been migrating to friendly countries and huge numbers living behind blank space here. The government is killing innovation here. Yep. Tony Giorgio said, you're a good dude, man. Appreciate your thoughts and your words. The saddest part is this. And then he quotes uh, Tristan saying, even if we have a solution for something that Lightning isn't ready for, the average person still doesn't care about Bitcoin. End quote. Tony goes on to say, all the issues you laid out are indeed issues, but ones that can be worked past. But changing consumer behavior, even amongst Bitcoiners, i.e. spending Bitcoin isn't a solvable problem. Small startup can tackle within the small timeline they have to work with, even thinking and talking about new problems that align with us, but are more broader than just Bitcoin is challenging and against the status quo. Your redesigns, pivots, and refocuses have been admirable. And no matter what you're doing with Bitcoin or otherwise, hope you get much success. You're on a great life track. You got any thoughts on there? I think it's very nice, very sweet uh, message from Tony. And, you know, shows a lot of empathy. And I think that's great. You got uh, Ryan Dale. He said, thing in there, dude. Uh, blockchain Boog. Salute. Everybody chimed in. Yeah. Lots of great. Uh, you know, encouragement. I think a lot of people can identify with this feeling. I mean, one of the lucky things I think uh, about bidding, building on Bitcoin is the opportunity to, you know, do something without anybody's permission. I think that was always a cool thing that I, I loved about uh, building in the Bitcoin space is like I didn't need to, you know, ask permission to go and build. So I think that's kind of really cool about it. Um, the other side to that is, um, but when trying to get investment, cause I do think it's much easier. It was much easier when we started Keon to get, uh, to get fundraising. I could, I could be wrong, but uh, I think it was easier certainly on a relative basis. And uh, I think now there's definitely more ways to get capital. If you want to go the HRF route or the open sets route, you can go do that. There's places like Pleb Lab you can come work out of and we can help you get to that point. Um, there's a lot of opportunities to go out and like, you know, join a workshop, you know, or do like, there's so much more opportunities now and there's hackathons and there's, there's Wolf, there's other stuff that's going on. So I don't think, I think it's never been better to have the opportunity to do a Bitcoin company, but I do think to get a raise and to, in, in, in this environment, at least. And I have a whole another thing we can talk about if you want to continue on about that. But I think um, I think it's much harder to get a raise if you're doing like a strictly a lightning only company without like a layer two option in there. Well, I'm not I'm not so sure that that's the exact case. I think money is dried up generally. So I don't think it's any I don't think it's about a specific tech thing. I think it's money's dried up generally and people are looking for, you know, strictly certain kinds of alpha, like alpha, alpha, like double alpha and not just normal alpha. And so that might just because money's a little bit tighter. And I think, you know, back to what you were saying originally about permission, raising money is permission. So that's if you, if doing what you love, what you want to do with your life requires raising money, you're going to have to ask for permission. And if no one's giving out permission, you're going to have a hard time. So in, it, in many cases, it's in most cases, it'll help you raise if you don't if you would keep building it despite not having money, um, that's kind of, that's a, I mean, that's a big filter. Imagine a, a woman who, imagine dating a woman and you're, you're like, uh, uh, she's like your only shot. Like you're, you know, you're that desperate and you're like begging and you're like, I'm not going to date anyone if I don't date you. How attractive are you to that woman? It's like the same thing uh, for an investor. Um, the, it turns people off. It's like, you have, you have to be, they have, you, you know, especially, especially with investment or dating, uh, people are looking for resilient people. They don't want to, they don't want a partner that they're going to have to 
kind of drag around and baby. So anyway, uh, but I, you know, to Carr's point, it is harder right now. Also too, you got to recognize a lot of these, this is just me talking, not Kian. A lot of these people who started investments and started these funds, you know, they just got punched in the teeth, you know, with a recession along with the founders out there and the depression that we're in. And uh, there's not a lot of exits. This is why you see like Fold and, and some of these other companies that are now IP are going to be IPOing. And hopefully that'll fun it, find its way back into the ecosystem. I think once we get to 100K, I think there'll be more money funneling its way in. Obviously, obviously these are just kind of my little, uh, you know, tea leave reading kind of thing. But I, I would imagine like once all this kind of plays out, I think the space will get a little bit more... Um, Maybe it pro- probably will still be just as hard, but it'll probably just be like maybe a little bit less, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. I uh, just want to respond to one thing there that you said, and uh, it's that I, the people, the VCs want to give you money. They they want to give you money. They just, they don't have money, much money right now either. And so they're, they're in a similar spot. It's not like they don't want to, they don't think you're building something great and they don't want to help you. It's just that they, they get permission from people who have, you know, even more money or more disposable money, and then you get permission from them. And so, and then the people at the very top, they get permission from the Federal Reserve Bank, uh, printing more money and what they haven't been doing for as much for a while. So that's just kind of the way things are right now. But I would, in general, I would just encourage to keep building and try to figure out a way to- But also add, also I would say add eCash, add Noster, add layer 2.5, layer 4, layer 5. Add add uh, decentralized add all that stuff in the deck. It can't hurt. <laughs> Kidding. Yeah, I don't recommend uh, doing <laughs> things you don't believe in. But yeah. you gotta you gotta you gotta make fun of it. That's the only thing you can do. You gotta laugh about it. It's uh it's a hard times. You gotta laugh about it. I don't know. The money money is where there aren't people already. So if like uh, if if you're going into eCash because you think there are other people building eCash stuff, you're likely late to the party. Uh, you want to be that first guy who's into eCash stuff, really. Um, so yeah. I don't. Uh, you, it, it's there's it's, a whole stick to it. You just you just wear a mask. You you say you're full on eCash. You say you're going to do layer three stuff, and people hand out money. That's how it works right now. It's a good sign if people don't believe in what you're building and that they don't understand it. In some in some respects, it can be a good sign because you're building something and truly differentiate it. But it does make it harder to communicate it. Um, anyway, there's a lot here, but you know, uh, Tristan found a lot of people who share his pain, and um, hopefully, he. But it's somewhat true, though. I mean, we're kind of at that point right now. We're like, you know, if he added, like, honestly, if Bit Escrow added, like, they're going to build a layer, a layer three, or some token attached to it. They would totally get different looks at it. If the fact that they're no, doing so. the fact that they're doing Bitcoin only doesn't help them. Come on, Keon. No, you know that's I don't think so. I don't think so. I, I think disagree. whatever problem whatever whatever likely criticisms there so, are of the product that so, happens regardless of whether they're so so we just had we just uh, Topher just explained Bit Escrow last night at San Antonio Bitcoin Club. And you just saw the people in the room. They're like, whoa, you could do this, you could do this. And there does seem to be some sort of like king making in, in this process. And I don't mind saying that because it's fucking true. And when you see somebody who's been building for three or four years, it, it kind of feels like that. And I don't mind, I don't mind saying that because they need to hear this and they will hear this, but this is what's going on. And, and it's okay. You don't have to agree with me, but it, it does feel like that. And I, I think this is kind of the thing that he wants to say, but I'll say it for him. Well, I don't, I mean, that could be true, but that's also something that people say when, when they, uh, when they don't get, when the world doesn't work out the way they want it to, they blame everyone but themselves. And in the case where the, there's, unless there's it's a actually, kingmaker unless that's it's, keeping unless, me from winning. Unless it's actually happening to multiple founders and then it's like, okay, then it, I would agree in, an, in a certain sense there, Keon, but if it's happening to multiple founders, which we just said earlier, then there's probably some of that. I'm just saying that you have to be careful with the way you explain your losses to yourself. And if it's other people's faults, you, it's hard to tell. A hundred percent, a hundred percent. But if there is a, there's a group of, of, of investors that are saying like, no, go like, Hey, no, you know, we don't get to come down and, and save you. Don't get like, there is a sense of that. And, 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 and to, for me to say that it's, it's, 
it's it's definitely there's a there's a sense of that and it's not just me saying it there's 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 a group of us that feel this way it's not just like one or two people it's not just car and his rants that's that's all i'm saying is just like it feels like that obviously they need to hear this so that way they know that this is going on that founders feel like this so they can then answer to it that's all i'm trying to bring out i'm just trying to bring it to light a lot of people who invest in these funds are ogs who listen to this and so they need to hear that feedback as well that's all. I didn't realize your sister was an OG, but <laughs> thank you, Katie. You're for welcome. All the, all the funds that hey, you join. Before you put in the that fund, before you put in their funds, ask them this question. That's all I'm saying. Like those people are listening to this pod. Ask them the question. That's it. Maybe don't. Maybe don't ask them that question <laughs> if you're trying to get money from them. Maybe wait until the check is cleared. And then, and well, then I mean, if all these people are dropping their their Bitcoin and their and their savings into these funds. They should ask him like, hey, what is this that I keep hearing that founders aren't getting the funding they need? Like they should probably ask that question. That's all I'm saying. That's it. That's all I'm saying. That's it. All right. Well, anyways, good post, Tristan. The next top story is Pavel Durov, co-founder of Telegram, arrested in France. Privacy territory, August 24th, tax D, 73 comments, 2,159 cents. Baby boy, they got him. They did get him. So, yeah. So this guy is the founder of Telegram and he was in France. You know, you know, France is nice. He's probably just like hanging out in France and uh, apparently got arrested and he's getting charged with very serious crimes. Um, and it's not a lot. I think it's like five million euro bail he had to pay. And I think he cannot leave France. He's out on bail, but he can't leave France. He has to check in twice a week. With officials there, the charges, I think, mostly amount to him not cooperating with French authorities enough. And then, you know, you could read into it deeper if you want to and say that it might have something to do with, uh, you know, possible telegram, international telegram use in, uh, you know, foreign affairs of, you know, governments that are kind of not aligned with the West. Um but who knows, really? There was a uh, Mike Benz was on, has been talking about this uh, quite uh, a lot, quite eloquently, and you know thinks that there might be something, something more coordinated happening uh, with like you know the the general West leadership in trying to get back doors into Telegram or you know you know possibly they might think that telegram is cooperative with, uh, Russia specifically. Um, but you know, that's all kind of, that's roughly, that's mostly speculative. I mean, you, but you know, people who like reading between the lines might, uh, find that an interesting story. Uh, but, other, but other, I mean, but otherwise this is pretty damning. I think the rumble founder like flew out of Europe, uh, when this was announced, I think, Elon Musk has expressed fear of going to Europe for being arrested. And so this has ramifications for any kind of technology that isn't willing to, I guess, bow down to uh, the demands of not, not only just the U.S. government or even European governments, but uh, governments in other countries um, it, because them not interfering in the right way in those countries is against the interests of the West. And so it's like kind of, it can get kind of messy, but so to see. Satoshi Nakamoto came in and this is like one of the bottom posts that didn't get zapped, but he's actually, he, he hit on this right away. This is kind of how I saw it. He have two citizenships. So I think he had a citizenship in Russia and a citizenship in, um, where was the other one? I forget the other one. And then he broke a rule. I think he broke two rules. The first rule is he created a shit coin. So that already puts a target on your back. That shitcoin was traded or you could, you could use it inside of Telegram, which had 300 to 500 million users by the end of the decade. It was already, it's already the biggest, one of the biggest messaging apps. I, I'm, says, not, I'm not on there. I know the it's saying billions of a billion users is what but, the news says. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to say is like, and th- this is kind of, you kind of, this is why I'm surprised that people are still kind of like barely discovering that there's a problem here. This is, has been the way forward. For a while now, this is the world that we live in. You can't be free anymore. You can't dominate. You can't dominate in this in this capacity. The way this guy was dominating, you can't dominate like that anymore, and still and still. 
be free. He also has thousands of children because he's like one of those mega sperm donors. I don't know if Kara's talking about domination that way, but that's no, cool. I'm talking about domination and the fact is like he's not playing ball. He went on Tucker Carlson, said some crazy things. Um, he has 300, 500 million users. He has his own shit coin. And he's winning. He's got thousands of children in Europe. Thousands of children has two citizenships. Is this just a, it was an easy target for them to pull? And I and I it's like Kanye said this like months. Remember when all that whole Kanye thing? I'm bringing in Kanye. Remember when Kanye was like, not all that, not not one man should have all that power. Like th- this is a real thing. They will they will terminate you if you get too big for your bridges, and then if you go and beat your chest about it. This is the world that we live in, Keon. It sucks. This is the world that we live in. I don't in. live in that world. I live in the internet. Yeah. Anyways, you don't think this could happen to you? It won't. Stacker News gets too big. You don't comply. No. Why not? Uh, because I'm I'm sneaky. <laughs> I'm, I don't know. I don't know why it wouldn't happen. I'm, uh, yeah, I don't know. Because uh, why would it happen? I don't. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go out. I would probably be way more uh, an, like a non and yeah. not go on a, you know, big podcast, an like alt that. podcast. And it's one thing to say talk your opinion. about old stuff. It's, when you're, it's one thing to say your opinion on this small show that no one watches. Exactly. Katie, you know, I don't know Katie too well, but I don't <laughs> think she's working for Macron. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this is where I think, but like once you, like if you go on some of these bigger pods and you say certain things like, yeah, they're watching, man, they're taking notes. You're just uh, you're just an end of the quarter kind of uh, thing they need to justify their position. I, I mean, they might have done this regardless. They're you know, apparently a Telegram is used by governments around the world, and so there's some there's some feeling of entitlement for like the bigger governments to want like back doors into those communications. I you know, but maybe maybe it just was a simple matter of. Uh, French authorities asking for his help in certain criminal investigations and him telling them to fuck off repeatedly. Uh, <laughs> that's what that's what the claim is. So it makes you wonder, like all this, all the people that didn't comply. The happy that, you know, or that did comply and they haven't said they complied. That's what I'm more fearful. Well, I, I think shortly after this, uh, Mark Zuckerberg released that oh, letter. Did he? Did you not see that letter, mm-hmm. Mark? I don't know if Is it was it in even, here? I don't know if it was even shared on Stacker News, but mm. he released a letter talking about a request for censorship that the Biden administration asked of Facebook and Instagram, and uh, that they complied with that they regret, and that uh, yeah, he at the time he thought it was wrong, but he was told that. Uh, it it was it should be done like they they censored the the, Bi- the Biden laptop story the Hunter Biden laptop story because they were told that it was a lie ended up being true similarly with covid stuff they were told to suppress like all kinds of speech on covid stuff the things that were you know factually accurate but inconvenient or yeah. you know so he he went out, he, you know he's a uh, similar thing is like wait um I maybe aligned myself with the wrong. Yeah, I don't trust anything that people. Uh, I don't trust anything he says. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm probably a little more. Yeah, you're a big suck fan, though. Uh, no, but I, I do, I do not think he is lying in this regard. I do think he. Re- I think when people talk about their regrets, I think they usually are honest about it more, more so than normal. Yeah, maybe. Any other thoughts? Oh, I think that let me bring up the top comment. The top comment was from RC25. It says, it's time for Noster. It doesn't exist other way. Do you think that's true? Um, I don't think it solves this problem yet. It might eventually. I think it has, protocols have the ability to, more so than uh, a platform like Telegram, to be able to avoid this because they, they, might, they might imprison Fiat Joff, but you still have someone like William running a relay and you know they might uh imprison primal people but then you have fiat job still running a relay and so on so it does have whack-a-mole yeah there's a bit of whack-a-mole going on and people don't like playing whack-a-mole because it's like generally a losing game it's like a carnival game so i don't you know that it does have the more potential to be free of this issue um, yeah. than than telegram does um 
are you still using tell you use telegram for stacker news don't you we had a chat but it got filled with uh trolls so i shut it down um so what do you use for chat now I still have Telegram groups that I'm part of. We have like a Bitcoin Founders Telegram group where we discuss Bitcoin Founder stuff. Um, but that's mostly it. I, I think contact I, some other Bitcoin Founders. I started a, a Simplex. So I, I spun one up for Thriller because yeah. uh, we have a community on Thriller and I um, spun one up over the weekend. Yeah, we have a Simplex chat. So I would say move over to this. Jack's funding it. I think he gave out a grant for it. Um, so that's good to see. Yeah, they were really interesting and, architecture. Uh, it's really nice. It's really, really nice. So it's just tough because a lot of people use Signal. So it's hard to transition them over. A lot of people use Signal. A lot of people use Telegram. It's hard to. Um, yeah, transitioning. Costs. Transitioning people. Yeah. It's simplex. So well, anyways. These yeah. things are becoming more common and I think they're. As this stuff increases, more demand will increase for alternatives. So that's yeah. good. Any any advice you would give to people that are building stuff that would be considered? Uh, what is this ticket thing we keep saying? I don't know. Uh, any advice you would give to people that are building uh, similar things like Telegram to be aware of? Um, um, because they won't get uh, scooped up. I don't. I don't have any advice. I mean the. The reason Telegram was built, I assume, the way it was is because it was a way that made sense and worked and scaled to a billion people. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's not much of a solution other than using protocols instead and using yeah. protocols that are capable of centralizing and scaling to a similar level. And yeah, and so one or the other. Uh, hopefully governments begin liking free speech at some point and then you can we can have choice to do one or the other but yeah i don't know i would say definitely like if you're listening to this and you're a bitcoiner or whatever um you're probably more of a target than you realize i would say um and then also like normal people like we were at sabc last night talking about this and they don't even know this is going on so hmm the next top story is Bitcoin is withdrawal. This is from Catcher, August 26, Fireside Philosophy Territory, 19 commas, 2,033 sats. What is this? Yeah, I thought this is great. Uh, basically talks about what it feels like to be a Bitcoiner and having to depart from more traditional expectations and values around how you think about spending money. Like you're basically withdrawing from convention is what he means by the title. And he describes, uh, you know, trying to communicate to his wife that they shouldn't get another mortgage. They shouldn't buy another house that they should, they shouldn't deal with that. And instead, uh, put their money in Bitcoin. And he's basically discussing feelings that he has around that feelings that his wife has around that. And that you're, you know, departing from the herd. It does feel very, lonely and uh, isolating, vulnerable, and it can be difficult and why many people probably don't or won't do it. But that's what he's saying. He, he's the process of learning about Bitcoin. He's had to, he's had, he basically had to do. Um, and it might be why the transition to Bitcoin for some people is so hard and so significant and profound is that they're going, they're having to revise you know, their financial expectations, which in modern life is like the majority of people's expectations is like most of their hopes and dreams are all tied up in possessions that they'll have. And so it can be a really big uh, pill to swallow, the orange pill. Yeah, we have a top comment. It was from M. Domino Corb in 24 said, I could really grasp what you were going through. I started with Bitcoin in 2011. Now, 13 years have passed. The withdrawal was excruciating as I was too attached to the system. That was too attached to the brainwashing outside the Bitcoin universe. Now I'm ready to leave the old world behind. Hala Money says, I admire your conviction and the clarity of your thought process. South Korea says, I still spend time on stuff that give me joy. A nice bike, exciting holidays, a place to live for my family. I don't see any of those as a ways to store my wealth. They are all depreciating assets and that's okay. What do you think about that? Yeah. I like that's beautiful. Yeah, I think 
but experience, I mean, most of the research shows that you primarily want to spend money on experiences and that's basically what that's describing. Um, you know, a nice bike is, it's maybe a material possession that buys you experiences in some ways, uh, for a low cost. It's like a low cost material possession on a relative basis to a house say. Yeah, it really is just about experience. The older you get, the more you realize it really is just about the experience and those little pockets of time that you created along the way and everything else doesn't really matter. No, I mean, most of, I mean, you were in your head, you were like in your body and your head and you know, whatever, like, you know, source as uh, some people say, uh, that's you. That's Every, why the possessions. Are that's right. why I, like the, the post earlier with Tristan is so important. I think what the message that he was saying is just like, just keep building it. Like who cares if no one wants to help you? It's even more of a reason to keep doing it. Um, if anything, it just kind of, it's just going to be that much more one of those when you get it punched in, it's going to be a hard uh, fist to pump in the air. So you got really, even just, if it isn't, that's what, that's, but, yeah, but, but that's what I'm saying. You got to do it just because you love doing it. And, yeah. and I think, you know, that's the reason to do it. You know, you got to really love what you're doing. Yeah. If, yeah. yeah. If you kind of, I think that's what he's saying. Need here. it to work out. Maybe not. Yeah. The right thing to do. I've been reading, uh, I'm on the, I went through Dante's Inferno now, uh, the purgatory, and then the, dude, the ending, the Paradiso, Paradise. <sighs> nice. It's really nice. Looking forward to that. Like, so I don't want to spoil it for people that haven't read Dante's uh, three, three act comedy, but that third part is really fascinating when it talks about God and about how it's all set, or at least to his understanding, to his understanding at the time. It's pretty fascinating. Did really Dante have, he didn't have like a particular so he was a theo, So he was a theologian, theologian. Okay. And then he was also really inspired by Aquinas. But he doesn't fancy himself a prophet. No. I think he was just, I think he was, because dude, it's so beautiful. The way the, 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 the it starts out and it was, he was going through like a midlife existential crisis. It felt like when you read it and that's like, there's a lot of analysis around it. I would just go down a YouTube rabbit hole. And, uh, but I was watching like a story picture book type of thing. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. They I mean, Peter, Peter Jackson really should make this into a movie, man. It God. would be cool. I'm just going to keep putting it out there in the world and somebody will. Hopefully. It's so cool. I dude. don't think it's a Peter Jackson though. Isn't that dude super old now? No, I think he's the one that made the Hobbit and, um, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, but isn't he like. But he could do a trilogy like end, this. End of career. No, dude, he did the Beatles. So he don't did you, the Beatles remake. Of wasn't that like Back. a decade ago? No, he did that like five years ago or three years ago. Okay. I think he can do it. I just think we need to find these young new creators. Oh, yeah. Like we get like Robert. We need Anders a new Peter something. Jackson. You know? uh, did you see they're doing a Nosferatu remake? Uh, I don't know who that is. Oh. It's like the first like scary movie, I guess you could say. Anyways, um, this is good stuff, man. Bitcoin is withdrawal. I love it. Yeah, it's a great... Uh, is this a new territory, fireside philosophy? No, we've had that for a while. I think it's Frost Dragon. Yeah. The stuff you talk about around a fire with some whiskey. Yeah. yeah. I can see that. Very cool. Yeah, we've had some great posts uh, in that territory that are uh, st exactly the like The fire, too. Yeah, that's true. Um, and then the final, is this final top story? Final? Yes. This final, is final top, top story top. is the Freedom Tech Stack. This is from Gray Ruby. August 26, Meta Territory, 38 comments, 2,163 say it's. What's this? Yeah. So this is Gray Ruby. Uh, in, in the wake of Pavel's arrest, he's, you know, like, how do I avoid, I don't know, becoming, a, becoming something like a Telegram user and getting my freedom revoked? Uh, and he's like, what, what tech stack do you recommend mm. for me to, to not have that happen? And, you know, and he also lists out these other things that have happened recently, the samurai arrest, the tornado cash stuff, other kinds of censorship, Canadian truckers, Grey Ruby is a Canadian. Um, yeah. And just ask and we get some great answers. It's like the what, top one. Yeah. Uh, it looks like Nitro says Graphene OS on the phone, Brave and Firefox for browsers, Fedora Linux on laptop, ProtonMail, simple login, aliases. Bounce between a few BPNs to accept Bitcoin as well. Gary B6 and suggestions. Yeah, a lot, that was a lot of stand, standard fair stuff we see on discussed on Stacker News quite a bit. But then a lot of other commenters have 
you know, given if they have a particular discipline or job, they have their own freedom tools that they like to use to help them do their job. We had one post by, I think it's Psycho Sage that he shared in the wake of that. Mm -hmm. uh, he just, the post is called Self-Sovereign Digital Ecosystems. And they're a designer, a web developer and a graphic UX designer. And they list off a bunch of uh, like open source, you know, uh, like FOSS tools that they use to do UX stuff yeah. and other development stuff, things like open office. They have like Inkscape as an OB Adilis, uh, OB Adilis you said that Illustrator was on, alternative. That was under privacy. This got posted under mostly harmless. Um, yeah, but, uh, self oh, right sovereign. There. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Yeah. But a lot of cool, like a nice list in there. And they describe themselves as, you know, maybe slightly uh, more paranoid than most. But I think some of these tools, like a lot of these I hadn't heard of. That I, I use Obsidian, but Pinpot, I didn't know, was a was an alternative to Figma. Interesting. I've heard of KeyPass mm -hmm. and Blender. But, yeah, every, I mean, each discipline probably has their own freedom stack. What's your freedom stack, Ian? Uh, I... It, I think this is an interesting thing because it's like, what is your threat model and what do you care about being free in? And I mostly care about being free in terms of money. That's like the main thing I'm concerned about being free about. Most other things I don't really care too much about uh, for some reason. I'm not as protective or conservative of most things, but um, with money, yeah. So freedom stack or freedom stack with money is obviously Bitcoin stuff. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Cool. That was a great post. Thanks for sharing. Uh, oh, yeah. And that's all the top five stories of the week. We're going to jump into my favorite segment of the week, and that's the Koob segment, where we get to talk about Koob's post. You know, what'd you pick this week? Yeah, I thought this was a great post. This was shared by Matt Black, who's a co-founder of Atomic Finance. But uh, last week, we reported on the forced closures that happened in the wake of like some kind of ruin minting that drove up fees to what you in this picture, 800 cents per uh, V byte. And uh, like, you know, there, he was responding to a stat because a lot of this, these Albi force closures were reported on Stacker news. And uh, he's like, man, how terrible is this UX uh, for lightning that this happened? Bad timing too, dude, for Albi. Yeah. Right. Even I was down on it last week too, as well. I was so pumped. Yeah. Prior. It appeared, I mean, yeah. To like someone who didn't know better, it probably appear that, Albi shipped this product that had a bug that was yeah, force closure. That's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but it wasn't, I don't think it was their fault at all. So, um, and it just is this quirk and lightning that happens when fees spike. And it kind of describes why this happens and uh, describes how it's solved by package relay, uh, which is going to ship in uh, Bitcoin core version glorious. 28. This is something Gloria has been working on since I first met Gloria. I met Gloria in. Chain code. Name drop. Uh, class. I mean, I don't, I talked to her one time in a video call, but. Uh, Name drop. She was doing that class and she began working on the stuff. Oh, with uh, chain code? Oh, boss. Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Because you were in chain code, right? Yeah. Man. Yeah. They had a lot of stars back then. Around the time uh, that I was starting Stacker, while I was building Stacker News, I think I was in chain code. Um, wow. Anyway. Uh, yeah, this is this has been merged and will release with Bitcoin Core 28. And what this allows is for this fee negotiation for um, channel closes to be uh, to be amendable in the future, um, because you can tack on another transaction onto this closing transaction, and it gets all relayed as one package. So that's kind of the idea. Is like right now. You kind of have these packages are separate and they're dependent on each other. But the problem is, is that the first package might get lost because it, it doesn't meet the requirement. It doesn't pay. It doesn't it stamp the stamp on it. Isn't worth enough. So like replaced by fee, you mean, or RBF? No, no. Okay. No, this is a, a child pays for parent is the type of fee bumping that this is, is where okay. you have a transaction a child transaction that pays for the parent transaction. And right now those are two separate things that get relayed separately. 
But this change makes it so the child and the parent, they're never separated. I thought that's why mempool had the accelerator thing. Or am I wrong on that too? Yeah, but mempool's accelerator is not a sol- a generic solve for Bit- for this problem in Bitcoin. It's oh. a solve for people who have the permission to use uh, mempool's accelerator because it's a centralized uh, transaction accelerator that has permissioned relationships with miners to basically you know, sneak a, a secret entrance to a block um, okay. is basically what a paid secret entrance to a block is what something like a mem- mempool accelerator is, which is very useful for a variety of things, but not a, not a solve in the way that we would like, which is like the censorship resistant means of getting things included in a block. So does this help lightning or? Yes. This solves this forced closure problem. Okay. The specific forced closure problem that we saw. It also it has a variety of uh, benefits for other protocol, other layer two protocols that rely on getting transactions in a block within a certain period of time. And so DLCs is another example where you're, uh, I believe you're trying to update uh, an, an attestation of what happened within a certain time period. Um, but this is, I think, the beginning of many updates in this regard that will help us defend uh, layer two protocols like Lightning that have this race, this like mempool race uh, that relies on fees. Yeah, I was I was hanging out with Topher and he's super excited about this package relay stuff. I heard about it yesterday. He was explaining it to me. So... Cool. I got so many smart people around me explaining all this stuff. It just goes out one ear through the other. I don't even, it's hard for it to stick. I don't know how you guys are able to stick all this stuff in your head. It has to have something to anchor to most, most things that, that you learn. And so if you're, if the concepts that it's all based on are kind of not, are kind of fuzzy and slippery already, it's just going to slip as well. I'm so. bullish on you guys. You guys are figuring this stuff out. Look at this. All the devs. I mean, this isn't, I've been working on this. Maybe Topher has had some say on this, but I've just been, uh, I'm mostly an observer. But you talk, I didn't even know You're talking was, about it, though, but. I vaguely understand it. That's my, my contribution. Good job. Good job to Matt, too, explaining this. Look at this. This is how you write a post. Yeah, great post. That's awesome. All right. The other one that you brought up was, uh, do you want covenants? Keon, do you want covenants? Um, I want more. I responded in here, but I want more self custody. That's basically what I want. If covenants give people easier, more, if it enables people to have easier self custody, I'll have more people have self custody, and that's good. And that's mostly the way I view it. I know a lot of other people think that any any op code that adds more functionality to Bitcoin enables uh, scams. Even if it enables other good things, if it enables one more scam, it's not worth it. And I, I just, I don't really, I don't think I subscribe to that view. I think I kind of think about it the opposite way. I think about it like laws. I think, you know, you, uh, you criminalize drugs, you create a black market for them. I believe, you know, you have these restricted rule sets. I believe you end up, uh, I believe freedom is good. Uh, and, and I believe and uh, Bitcoin already has defenses against um, like outright abuses of it because you have to pay for the block space that you occupy. And I believe if Bitcoin were had expressive enough script language that we would have a lot more good people using Bitcoin for good purposes and it would price out bad people, quote unquote bad people. That's my general point of view, but I don't know about any specific proposal and whether I support that specifically, I, I said in here that if I had to decide, gun to my head in this, like in that moment, what I would choose, it would be great script restoration. Um, you said scammers are going to scam regardless. I love that. That's a charism, I think. Well, they just, I mean, I just don't think. And then we had, we had some back and forth, I think. Uh, Justin from Shocknet, what did he say? He said, saying scammers are going to scam regardless is like leaving your door open. I just don't, I don't know how that makes any sense to me. I'm, what I'm saying is that uh, 
regardless of the door that I put in, someone's going to try to break in. And I'm not saying I want to leave it open. I'm just saying I want uh, a door that maybe good people will stand and defend in front of or something. Maybe it serves beer. I don't know. Uh, but the, the, I don't, it's not a fair analogy in my opinion, but that this is kind of, you know, these discussions need to happen. I, you know, I hope he shares his point of view somewhere other than just the conclusions with alongside. Uh, yeah. Um, I would take a look at this stickers if you're interested. Um, I don't really have an opinion on it. This is car staying in his lane. Um, I, the way <laughs> cars in his lane today. <laughs> Lucky I'm day. totally in my lane. Totally yeah. in my lane today. Uh, passengers get a, get aboard. Uh, no, He's the way I, honestly, I, you know, I've talked about this before and I think I said it on the show many times, I think everybody has a job to do in Bitcoin. Yes. It's, it's open and it's decentralized and all that kind of stuff, but there's an order to this. Maybe it's not something we talk about publicly. Maybe it's something that we all just know inherently, but the devs need to figure this out because I, I don't know what the answer is. I'm just a pleb on the ground trying to spread adoption, trying to help people. Like there's a lot of plebs that are doing their job right now. And so the devs need to figure this out so we can get it to scale. That's how I look at it is, um, is that you gotta, you gotta trust the people, you gotta trust the process. So that's, I think it'll just get figured out, but I don't know enough to talk about it, but I know hear you guys talking about it all the time. And I'm just like, it's a complicated thing. And it's, you know, you're trying to basically everyone's trying to predict the future and you have people who predict the future will be bad. People who predict the future will be good. It's a lot like a political debate. Um, I would say the thing that I would say is just be careful who you're listening to on the subject because everybody has a reason why they want to do it that I've seen. And this is just like taking an outside perspective from it. Yeah, I definitely. Everyone has their own motivations. And that's just facts. Yeah. Everybody's co-opted by something. Someone, Not in a bad way, just yeah. co-opted so, by some. Some people have them in bad ways. But yeah, I don't. Um, I would. Everyone has a bias. And so you have to has a bias. factor that in. Factor that in. See this car state. I mean, if life. you were, if you like, if I if I were a Michael Saylor, yeah, I would be like, just let no institutions don't don't need any more self custody. I thought clubs. we were supposed to be making Bitcoin for Michael Saylor. That's what I'm doing. That's what I do. I wake up every day and I just my I just send him. I, I I have my my Michael Saylor thing right when I go out the door and I go like this and I just oh, I kiss this it. is for you, Michael. I kiss I just it lips right on. I just don't, I don't do the <laughs> fingers. So it's old tongue. Oh, we'll cut a little hole in it anyway. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, there's like, there's a certain, I, I imagine if you if you have like huge bags in Bitcoin and you have like private Co-opted. keys you haven't touched in a long time, you're like, don't change anything about Bitcoin, please. My wealth, I'm rich. You're going to keep me from being rich. Anyways, good on Jimmy for bringing this out. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what the devs figure out. I don't know. And then my story this week was Peter McCormick closing his show. Did you see this? It's kind of sad. Did you ever uh, listen to his show? Uh, yes, I'm, I'm a fan of his show. I think he does a great job. As like he's like an everyman uh, of Bitcoin. It was a highly like look at this. There's a lot of back and forth with it. I was surprised. Play poet had the top comment. She said, "I think that's really awesome. He's earned the freedom to explore and sharpen his voice, and widen his reach, sacrificing for it up front, only growing alongside chaos, to now being able to mold it into the life he wants. That's professional." Well said. Very positive. Very nice. Uh, I got BTC Manual. He said, I guess the Bitcoin podcast space can only pull in so many eyeballs and it's a small market share with some competition for those views. If, say, Sailor goes on one pod to talk about something, people are less likely to listen to the same topic on another show. That's true. I think there are a lot of repeat guests that he has on and I suspect he felt, you know, he seems like like an empathetic guy. So he probably felt what his uh, audience felt with having the repeats and also probably wants to continue growing the podcast, probably sees it in the numbers and it's like, wait, uh, this isn't getting bigger. Yeah. And I don't know how to make it bigger, make it more general, make it, turn it into something that's competitive with, I don't know, a Tim Ferriss podcast or, you know, something that's more broad, but he has a Bitcoiner slant. And that's what a lot of Bitcoiners are saying anyways, is that we need more, uh, non Bitcoin things that, have a Bitcoin voice to them uh, or Bitcoin. You know, we say that with businesses a lot. There should be a lot more bars. Mm. And, I don't know. Touché. Schools and I don't know, clubs and whatever uh, that have 
that have a Bitcoin are running them and they're not about, they're not about Bitcoin strictly. They just have Bitcoin as part of it. Yeah. The, and that's all the top stories of the week stickers or the, the ones that we wanted to discuss. Uh, oh, minus the top any? five. We had some AMAs. We had, oh yeah. Uh, Nico from Simply Bitcoin, Boom. who was banned from YouTube recently, Oof. which is harsh. And apparently they don't have many answers for why that happened. And I'm sure we'll learn eventually that it was some mis- mistake of some kind. But this might be the really biggest. Sad. This might be the biggest podcast. I think it is probably the most. Listened That's to funny. Keep Peter goes down a peg, and then new podcast king is crowned. There you go, Nico. Congrats. Mm-hmm. And then uh, after that would probably be Brandon. Brandon Keys. B Keys. His green candle real big. It's blowing up, dude. Wow. Oh. It's kind of funny how you do see there is a transition there. There's a transition. Yeah, there. the torch. Who were last generations Bitcoin? Podcasts? It was all the guys from 2017. But who was, was like Lavera, Marty, Peter? They're still here. Pomp, but they're still doing it. I mean, Pomp, yeah, Pomp. I don't know what happened. But I don't think they're not as big as uh, these guys are. Or I don't know, maybe Green Candles on the same level as Marty too. Now, maybe I don't know the numbers, but. That's pretty exciting. But yeah, dude, that was crazy to see him when I saw this. I was like, it was crazy to see him on Stacker News. He knows you exist. You're relevant now, Keon. This is the second AMA he's done on Stacker News, actually. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. And it, but it, that was cool. We also had an AMA with uh, Peruvian Bull, which is another oh, great yeah. AMA macro thinker writer. Uh, had a lot of great things to say, very detailed answers. Is that in, oh, it was just under AMA? If you're interested in macro stuff, especially a voice you might not have heard much from, um, uh, I would highly recommend going through that AMA. Lots of great, Jenny, really good yeah, answers. What's she doing on there? She's scary um, looking. Yeah, there were some other meta stuff. I think it was, we had like a small release. Siggy's trying out his wallet, other people trying out. So I'm trying to catch up. He's talking too fast. Trying to deal with right, it. Would you say which one it was? This one? Yeah, we have the Phoenix. You can attach a Phoenix D wallet raw, a raw Phoenix D wallet without like a Ellen bits in front of it or anything, if you want to. Um, but I would make sure it's like a, a Phoenix D you're only using for Stacker News, just so the amounts are small. Oh, everybody wanted Phoenix, it looks like. People love Phoenix D because it's like, it'll be the. It'll it'll be the pleb running node for a while. I is think. it the uh, is it? You think it's the best that's out there? I as think far as like their whole. I think they've really uh, done. I think you know you have every lighting company is going. Every lighting application is kind of going its own way. You have uh, L and D going the stable coin route, so they've been spending a lot of resources on that. You have Core Lightning. You know, designing for green light, kind of low resource usage scenarios and doing a great job at that. You have LDK, which is like this deeply integrated, hyper flexible type of situation. But then you have uh, you have Async, um, a, a, who develops Eclair, which is this lightning implementation that Phoenix D uses that is, you know, specifically serving that their mobile wallet, which they then spun into the server implementation and they're going after consumers, uh, you know, sort of disproportionately with their model. I think, I think we'll see everyone come back to consumers again, but they're a bit ahead in this regard because they have splicing that's live. And their LSP is gigantic. And is that T plus that who does, who does all that over there? They're a French team. I don't know who specifically. Yeah. I believe is it, you said T-Blast? Yeah, I believe T-Blast is on the team. I don't know who the founders are. I don't think I've ever seen them anywhere. Keep it that way. Yeah. Keep it. Keep it hidden. Keep it whatever way. French people are just cool, you know? Yeah. Good stuff, man. Good week. It was a lot, good. A lot, lot to talk about. It feels like everybody's back. Are we back? They're too? back. Where were we? I think everybody's just on vacation. Um, Cool. Uh, we're going to jump into uh, the top stackers of the week. This is uh, a reoccurring segment that's growing in popularity. Undisciplined. <laughs> Sound like Kamala Harris. <laughs> Coop. Like nonsense. Oh, I'm sorry. Plep Poet and the, and the audience gave me um, 
Heckler. Directing. We have a heckler. I love it. Makes me better. Morningstar, EK, Bitcoin, Abe. Um, who's Sakan Warlock? I do not know. I don't think it's Warlock. It's Waluk. Oh, interesting. Sakan Getting Waluk. some magicians in there, some D&D yeah, players. We got, yeah, so there's now we're going to get into the most popular segment in the game. The Bitcoin game, that is. There is no more bigger popular segment. This might, this might, this could be a podcast on its own. Let's just start it. Let's kick it off. Oh, okay. let's jump. We'll get back to another exciting episode of the Cowboy segment. Boom. Boom. Cut Most it popular. Clip that. That's a clip right there. Coob. Bitcoin is the future. That's right. Undisciplined. 117. Blockchain. Book. It's a fairly static segment. Unless people go on vacation. TN Stacker. That's what Scoresby told me the other day. No, he's his blockchain. When you're listening to this, is it blockchain? It's blockchain Boog. We call him that for like four years. It's Boog. He it's goes by Boog on like other venues. It's B for sure. I'm not just making yeah. this stuff up, Plat Poet. No. Sometimes. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> no, I, I remember there was a reason he, he used to go by Boog, right? And then he cut it off to B because he didn't want to dox himself. I just doxed him. Uh, yeah. No, I don't think I don't think that his that's his legal name. It might be. Him is, I mean, all. Super Testnet is his, his mom named him Super Space Testnet. It's possible. His mom. I was watching a clip the other day on Pleb TV where Dusty came on with Super Testnet and we did two mics. Oh, it was so funny, dude. Did you touch mic tips? No, but me and Super did it at the same time, and it was like, dude, it was the most hilarious thing. Those are the oh man. Yeah, bring back PBS. It's a good game that men play. Um, I am single, public enemy. Public enemy, wow. Choke one. Dude, yeah, everybody's look here. Look at this. Look at these hats. Is this who we think it is? Do we know who the stacker that is hiding? We do not know. They've been in hiding for a long time. They've not come out of hiding. It it's might not, be. It's not It's not Ben the Carmen. Paloff right? or whatever. The Telegram founder's name is in hiding. So, no. Okay. I don't I'm think hiding. he's using this platform. Well. He's the kind of attention you don't want right now, Coob. I'm just making guess. I'm just guess. My guess is as good as. Do you, you think you'll ever do encrypted messaging? Or you do want to do encrypted messaging? You sure you want to go up that hill and fight on it? Uh, I don't see it as a hill. <laughs> I see it as more like a valley. Just don't a mountain. We have. So you yeah, want to climb up? I to- like long clippings over here. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Shots fired, apparently. Like uh, this is what happens. This is why it's its own podcast, the Cowboy segment, straight uh, out of a uh, uh, leprechaun's yeah just birthday party. <laughs> Keon, while I pull up the uh, oh here we go. Let me do the fountain boost stuff. We got open mic said fountain makes it rain. We got uh, somebody blockchain boot says hmm episode got cut off missing some content zap. Yeah, for some reason, a fountain cut off the end, but I re-uploaded it anyway. So for whatever reason, like it didn't, the ending of last week's episode, if you were listening to the pod, we got cut off at the end. I think we were saying some controversial stuff. It's possible. That's probably what it was. Oscar, Oscar pulled the- We're too uh, powerful. He was like, can't let this most popular segment keep going. Love Oscar though. Anyways, um, that's, um, that's it. That is it. What's up with you? What are you doing this what you, weekend? Whoa, I'm supposed to ask that. Yeah, what, are you doing? Doing your what are you, what are you now, doing right? this weekend, Kia? Uh, okay, fine. I'll let you win. Um, I don't think I'm going to do anything. I'm supposed to do a maintenance on the site, so I'm going to take down the site. Then I'm going to oh. put it back up again. Changing jurisdictions? No, same jurisdiction. Uh, you, the United States of America. The land of the free, the, the of home the of the brave. That's right. The best constitution in the world. So long as it lasts. Yeah. And uh, I don't know if we can still say all these things, but God bless America. I don't know. Got to defend democracy, Car. It's the communists, dude. The communists inside of our government. They're trying to collapse it from within, kill innovation, arrest founders, kick them out of the country, arrest them. Well, that was that's Put them France. behind bars. We're not in France. This is what this is where it's going. I'm I'm uh, I'm just you know what I'm going to start doing. I'm going to start carrying the Constitution around. 
You should so just I wear. Just, I could just start just referencing it. Wear an American flag like a toga around. Yeah, that's I think real, so. Real American stuff. Anyways. Anyway, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do that. I'm going to be at home. I'm going to work. That's what I'm going to do. How about you? I'm going to pray for America this weekend and pray that the communists inside of our government, you know, get defected and, and the patriots inside our government win. I'm going to pray for that. I don't know if they're communists. Definitely communists, socialists. I think they're like, they're like people that believe in elite power. I, I think that's mostly what it is. It's communism. And communism gives them more power, but I don't think yeah. they like ideologically agree with communism. I don't even think they know what communism is. I think they're smart. I don't think they're that smart. I think they're just following the money. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, I'm going to do that. And then uh, we got Jippy Party right now. We're about to, so I need to set up. But, Jippy! Uh, Jippy's launching right now. Can we get a yay Jippy out there? Yeah! Just Jippy. one person. Oh. Two, two. Woo! There you go. Uh, yeah, so Jippy's launching. And then, um, yeah, I got a lot of stuff to do. Mostly work for Mexico City. You um, moving to Mexico? No. Away from the communists? No, I'm staying in Texas. Are. Land of the free, Texas. Come on. Mexico and America. That's not the plan. The plan is to save Texas first, then we'll save America, then we'll save the world. Yeah, cool. I'm, yeah, look, because uh, we, um, we had Carlos on talking about the Mexico City uh, block party part two. Um, and those guys really know how to party down there. So yeah. if, you're, if you're a traveler or you're in Mexico, come to the, come to the block party. I yeah. might be there. I might not though. You're going to go? Really? I might. What? I keep in the pasta, the door open. Whoa. The door is open. This is news to me. Did you hear that? It's unlocked. Keon's coming with us to Mexico. I didn't Man. say I'm coming. I said I Jeez. might go. Dude, we can do a stacker news you know live down right. there. You got me all pumped now. I don't Dang, know. Only if we, only if we dress dude, like mariachis. I would totally dress like a mariachi. We could wear mariachi hats too. We'll have tequila shots. It'd be a whole thing. You know, I had a great idea yesterday or somebody in the San Antonio Bitcoin club. They said we should do a Bitcoin cruise. I don't know if that's a great idea, but it's an idea. What do you, I don't know. It's true. It's very common. I thought it was startup. a great idea when they told me. I was like, yeah, that's a good idea. We should totally do a startup day on a, on a boat. I don't know. I, maybe we do like a yacht. We like rent a yacht and we have a bunch of Bitcoiners on it. Yeah. For like a, you know, like a day or two, everyone you can leave. You think we can rent We're sailors? Ashore. You think we can rent sailors yacht? Yeah. I'm, he might even donate it. Like Can we part of a stackers. open stats grant or something? Let's build a post for Sailor's Yacht. Uh, we got 99 Days of Summer said Happy Friday. Happy Friday. We got uh, Better Go Kid said money is also flooding into AI right now. It's true. Uh, 99 Days says Bitcoin payments money. and AI give me money. <laughs> They'll hopefully get money. 900 million users apparently. Okay, uh, closer to a billion. I was more right than you are. Lord of the Rings was filmed in 2001. There you go. Told you. That guy's I love old. who's fact checking this. I love this. HN days. is a top stacker. Oh, what would you feel if like Hacker News is the top stacker or top thing? They do a great job. They have a bajillion users. Dude, talk about like the ultimate diss there. <sighs> Dude, it's like Wolf for something else. Okay. I don't know where that was going. I don't know. I want to diss you back. <laughs> but I don't want to do it enough that I'm willing to like really say I, That's it. not a diss. Yeah. I know. But that's they, like they part for, of the diss. They pay for my services. I'm like, pre- I'm like pretending they're it's the, a diss. They're my number one client. Whatever I can do to help. It's them. mostly the intent that hurts when you insult someone. The I didn't even that think I'm that was it. This guy said that. Like, I didn't say that. The fact that I'm trying to hurt you. No, but you were like, you were like doubling down. You're like, ooh, how no, does that feel? No, but look, he said, of course, what if Hacker News is the top stacker? Yeah, and you're like, how does that feel, Keon? I didn't say like that. Feel. Roll back the tape. Clip this. All right, people are coming in. We got to stop this. All right, fine. Keon. Zap.